Hey guys, welcome back to some more tales. If I remember correctly, the last time I played, um, we rescued uh, the child from the temple after letting her eat her mom. And uh, now we're um, going back to the ship on the run for the um, Abbey. Because of course they want their Tyrion back. so much in this game like as long as you have one or two people that are also physical so they can toss and you can it's so nice i really like the balance of the characters in the game also like even if i were to lose velvet and i had to fight by a, a school gunne or um, lovey set that wouldn't really matter at all because it's so balanced that you can play like every character like how they kept the effect of the malevolence the small black particles in the air just like in Tales of Sestria wondering what those still coins are going to do if it's like the same as in uh, Celia that you can buy upgrades after you finish the game once so to make new game more enjoyable or hard or whatever you want it to be really hope it's something like that Otherwise I'm just collecting them and it doesn't really matter anyway. That's also a possibility. Like, do those plants grow back or do I just miss a bunch? Really don't know. No, come on, leave me alone, thank you.
at least this town has turned into demon shed, so that's something. just straight up lying to the kid because Eleanor like hurt her mom so bad and then she ate her. She doesn't know she ate her own mom but all right you're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? Moloch taboo? Well, this is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans, for their own protection. You still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call demon blight does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realize this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons. Or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then. On the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land. With seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a nominat. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse Point, 
clever boy. That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? What's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? For you too, you know. Yeah, so she is. Thank you. Come on. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malachim experience emotions too. But Malachim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Moloch, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette... That must be what Eisen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those Class 4 islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. The place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered. And her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk as soon as she hit open water. 